right? Fallen Angel on XFM 104.9. Well, we're back. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl's all a little bit... I don't know, he's a bit frustrated. He's sort of a bit sweaty and fed up today, aren't you, because of the heat? It's too much, though, isn't it? He was taken out, he was sort of wanted to fight. You know, he doesn't use like a fight. I sort of like lead on him and try and rub his head. Yeah. But today he was, he was sort of leading it. He was sort of like getting a little bit. I, if I didn't know better, I would have said it was sexual frustration. Well, I was like watching, you, Rick, if you don't mind me saying, I was watching, not in that way, just for watching. It was sort of like he was going, oh, I want to hit you. And yeah. I was thinking, does he want to hit me or does he want to do something else to me? Exactly. What were your thoughts, Carl? Exactly. I mean, I saw him sort of wrestling with you on the floor and you clearly weren't enjoying it, but he was really. Yeah, what was it. that going on? What, what's the change? Why are you suddenly sort of. Uh, what, 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 what are you trying to say? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it was weird that you suddenly. It was like you were all. Oh, you you're saying uh, a bit, sort of a bit gay. No, is that what you're saying? No, but what was Suzanne accused me of that in the week? Why? For being a bit gay. So I'm sure you're gay. Why? Just because I was moaning about stuff. She said, "Oh, you're a drama queen." <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's, well, that's what, what were you moaning about? <sighs> Not just, having enough gay sex. Just, no. Just she, th th she didn't have a knob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going, oh, why don't you oh. get yourself a nice little knob? Yeah. I mean, can I call you Frank, please? <laughs> Could you wear this false beard? Yeah. It's yeah. just, um... Well, we'll talk about it later. It was about the Seven Wonders. I just wasn't that impressed. <laughs> he was impressed right? he said, he said, uh, <laughs> well, we'd say that, yeah. Well, we got a top show well, coming up, haven't we? But if you are a little bit, kind of, just a little bit sexually... You know, don't be afraid to, to let it out. I mean, if you want us to relieve you of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let's have a little bit of Maggie Mae by oh, Rod. Oh, it's some beautiful day. Like a Georgie. Um, that's your favourite song, isn't it? Oh. That's we weird, isn't it? Strange, isn't it? That's weird. I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear Rod Stewart singing about a lovely lady, please, Carl. As would I. Well, I, I've only just read about this, and I'm quite... I don't know anything about it. This naked rambler, Steve Goff. Yeah. Uh, is he doing some kind of... He's doing a walk from Land's End to John O'Groats. Is he completely nude? Yeah, he's been arrested ten times on the way, apparently. Right. It says here that Nora Goff, his mum, <sighs> she's in her 70s, she's begged her son not to walk naked from Land's End to uh, John O'Groats. She says, I don't know where he gets this from. Certainly not me. I am, and have always been, quite conservative. He would never have been allowed to walk around the house without covering himself up. I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm ashamed of him, but I do not approve of what he is doing. Having said that, it's good to see him on the telly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be. It's not about anything. It's lovely. It's not matter. embarrassed until they're famous, would exactly. it? However, however embarrassing yeah. it is. But um, well, my, I can't believe my son's a serial killer. Nice to see him on the telly. <laughs> it's it. Well, it's he looks like one. He's not sure. obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, what is he doing? I don't Steve understand. Steve wouldn't say he was, and he's not. He's no. just a rambler. Just, uh, but he's there, right? What's his, it, what's his motivation? He's just walking to. I don't know. Just it's just a nudist, I suppose. Right. And there's a picture in there, and uh, Carl looked at it, and he went, oh. What's the point of that? He went, well, look at him. He's got shoes and socks on. He's got a rucksack on. He's got a hat on. He's not nude. He's just got his knob out. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think he's got a full beard, thinking, oh, I want to hide some skin. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. this little chap needs the air. Yeah. I'll pop him out all the time I can. Yeah, it really annoy me. Because it's in the, in the supplement today as well, with the, with the mirror, right? And they've done, uh, <laughs> done a bit about nudists and that. Yeah. Again. Um... <laughs> Same problems all the time. <laughs> Go on. Um, there's like an old fella sat there, just. Uh, How do you know he's old? Well. <laughs> Why are you looking, Carl? If, why the, yeah. Looking at his face, aren't you? Presumably. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just saying he's old and he's sat there smoking a pipe. Sure. With his sandals on. Yeah. They're quite normal, just with his his knob out. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, but look, he always make the same mistake. He's got a little white deck chair. Yeah. Yeah. If you're nudist. Don't go, don't go for white. Why? Just sitting on that, getting a bit clammy and stuff. Ah, the f <laughs> white. Don't go for white. Go for darker colours. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. How do I? But I love it. I love the fact that he's just got loads of pictures of naked men. Yeah. Walking around with loads of pictures <laughs> of naked men. I'm just saying, a d dirty arse on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've discussed the news before. Though. I don't understand the impulse at all. I don't. I do find it bizarre. I mean, there's a picture there of three men nude in a pub. Yeah. I d just having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> just having a chat. Oh, look at Carl carrying but around what's those pictures. The, I mean, oh, okay, fair enough. Walking around outside, but indoors, in a pub, nude. Well, it must be a nudist Pop on a pub. Pair of no, that must be a nudist holiday, I assume, yeah. as opposed to like the local. There uh, is, though, isn't there? There's a, there was a thing in Bazaar magazine the other week where. Sure. There was a, a picture of some people 
Uh, they've got an airline of their own now. What, nudists? Nudes. Nude airline? So you just, you can get on there. <laughs> you already start as soon as you get on. Sure. And, uh, but what's the point? Well, I'd be worried just about banging against things. <laughs> you know. So to speak. Yeah, my shoes and things. Or spilling the hot, when the waitress comes along, what, the aerosess, and might she spill hot coffee? Yeah, that's a good point. Would, Would she have uh, to be nude? Would the stewardesses have to be I nude? I don't know. But that bit as well, where they walk down the aisle and they have to check if you've buckled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, excuse me, miss, can you just... And over 50s, so always over 50s. Right, yeah. So it'd be an old woman on the plane. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, can you just lift your left <laughs> tit up so I can see the belt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God! Yeah. Oh, dear. Imagine if you've got to go into the crash position. Oh, God, yeah. You know? <laughs> the last thing you see is your John Thomas. <laughs> John Thomas. As you, go, as you go crashing into a mountain. Terrifying. And then what if you've got to abandon ship? I yeah. know. Well, uh, how would they explain that? Yeah. Get onto an island. <laughs> exactly. All right. Or being picked up by, you know, a passing ship. <laughs> yeah. Carl, you notice they also play volleyball a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, you've always mentioned that, but yeah. I thought you were joking, but they love it. Yeah. <laughs> They've said, they said, that's what they do. They get to this special holiday That camp. can only be... Either they got the idea from sort of like Carry On Camping yeah. or Benny Hill, or they actually like it jiggling around as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. But is that safe? Well, I assume safe. so. You play volleyball with trousers on, don't you? I wouldn't have thought... Yeah, but there's a bit of, uh, like, support there. <laughs> I mean, I was watching, um, <laughs> Athletics, right, mm. the other week. Yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, I was watching it because there's a lad who, who I went to school with. He's, like, winning gold medals and everything now right, in the right, Olympics right, and right. stuff, right? So I was looking out for him. Uh... Now, if you went to school with him, I'm assuming he's got three legs or something? No, no, he's, he's normal. just a regular guy. He used to push me on uh, on my go kart, and sure. I, so I feel like I've you've trained. I was him, there yeah. from yeah, the, the start, training up a bit. Yeah, and uh, watching the program, and it was swimming in it, and uh, I was watching that for a bit, getting a bit annoyed because, but that butterfly stroke. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they do that. No, nor do I. It's just hard work. It doesn't make you go any faster than let's say the. <laughs> That, crawl. that stroke. The the crawl. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, that stroke on radio doesn't work. The crawl, yeah. So uh, I was watching that. You know, that's that's annoying. Yeah. And then they got onto the running bit, <laughs> and uh, my mates in this race. Yeah. Now they do the side shot, don't they? So you can see who's in the lead. Sure. And then they do that front shot, where it's absolutely pointless. The only reason to do the front shot, I I think, is to keep women interested. <laughs> <laughs> because you can basically see his tackle going from left to right, being battered all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you looking? Seriously, you had no choice. If you wanted to watch it, it was like, I was interested if he was going to win, but it's like, you know... But what, why did you turn over and watch Charlie's like? Angels instead? Because I wanted to see if he won the race. Or flip back at the end. Just flip back to get the result if you don't... Well, yeah. Or at least turn away or close your eyes well, well, on the front it. shot. No, I wasn't... I, I just... It's Suzanne weird. was happy. Suzanne was loving it. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Just go to the other shot. But they were showing you the front shot <laughs> and running along there. They could have just shown the top half, but they didn't. Sure. It was there. <laughs> There's his heads moving along at 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Well, I think you're meant to see the running, the actual legs moving. It's an athletics coverage, isn't it? It's sort of like... But they don't show you a shot from behind. Did you want that? And I didn't want that either. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you were disappointed. Yeah. Play a record. What we having? Better radio ad? Yeah, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah. To you, please don't go to sleep. We've got another <laughs> hour and 35 minutes of fun chat and great, great music. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Pilky, little K-Man Pilkers, little baldy twat mank whinging, a little bit bent Pilkers. <laughs> there he is. There he is there. Now, Rick, you may remember that last week we opened <laughs> with um, some quality uh, knob news. Knob news, yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, it was um, Hitler's Hitler, um, <laughs> Hitler's knob. Hitler's knob was one of them. That just that just sparked <laughs> off into a whole a whole bunch of other yeah, uh, yeah. knob related discussions. Yeah. And I'm pleased so far to see that we're almost at the halfway mark uh, for this first hour. And so far we've only talked about nudity and or todgers. Yeah. So excellent work from us. Well done, lads. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Doctor Fox and the rest of the Sony uh, Award <laughs> Committee listening to this one. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, more knob news. I don't know if there's Go a jingle on. for that, maybe. Uh, oh, you nearly had the eye out. Knob news. <laughs> knob news, excellent. This is uh, an extraordinary story. Um, a woman tried to sue her bosses for £210,000 after finding a cooked penis in a canteen stew. Hospital cleaner Sophie, something, 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 I don't, can't really pronounce that name, was eating goulash for lunch and could not cut one of the lumps of meat. <laughs> oh, you can see where it's going. I've got so many questions already. I know. She picked it up and tried to chew it, but it was too tough. Then she inspected it with workmates, who all agreed it was a penis. <laughs> Imagine that discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss Matlata said she vomited for the rest of the day, instantly became a vegetarian, <laughs> and had to have psychiatric help. It's not known whether the organ was from a human. The case continues. Well, it can be found out, so that's one thing. Obviously, the doctors aren't confused. They're not going, I don't know, I've never seen one like it. Yeah. Uh, also, why is she in goulash? <laughs> I know. I mean, that is my first question. Why? <laughs> you, yeah. You, you, uh, oh, lunch. Oh, what do you want? Oh, no, I fancy some goulash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, some gooly lash. Gooly lash, Thanks like very much it. indeed. Lancashire cockpot. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Is on the menu. Brilliant. Only five pounds fifty. Uh, um, w uh, wangers and mash. I'd love some wangers and mash, please. If you've got any knob related puns, knob food related puns, then call XFM on three four two six one four zero nine four. Ricky dot Gervais at XFM dot co dot uk. Call Chris Miles at Radio One dot XFM dot Yeah. Cock coke. Uh, cock a van. Cock a van. It's already done for there's you. Some, there's wangers and mash. Cock a van. Lancashire cockpot. Uh, you know. <laughs> That's just off the top of our brains. Yeah. So, if so you've got any you of your own, keep them to yourself, we're not interested. What do you make of that, uh, knob news? I need to know hospital. I don't think so. Oh, oh yes, it was, no, hospital <laughs> cleaner. You're right, oh, hospital cleaner. Oh, God, I know how your mind's thinking already. There's been a mix-up. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of mix-up? I love that. What, some bloke's gone in, some lesbian's gone in what a sex change, she's got a carrot for a <laughs> cock. Yeah. A stew and steak. <laughs> a stew and steak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a doctor, you butcher. This is not funny. There was some, uh, some other news, uh, whilst we're doing the knob news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just cram this one in. Um, there was some story on some news website about some lad who uh, wasn't happy with what 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 he'd been given? Right. What do you mean? He had a, he had an op. No, no, uh, no. He wanted to have an op. He wasn't um, happy with what God had given him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the look, what the Lord had popped downstairs <laughs> for him. <laughs> sure. And uh, sorry, no, wait a minute. Was he a bloke who wanted it? Yeah, a fella. Yeah, a fella. And he what he wanted? A, he, what, he didn't want a knob, or he wanted a bigger knob. Wanted a bigger one. Right. Okay. And okay. Uh, cost five grand. Right. Um, and they made a mess of it. Well, what do they, how, how do they make a mess of it? Don't know, it c came out... <laughs> ...smaller than they went in with. Well, no, what do you mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs. Oh, God. He borrowed the money off his mum. There's been a slight mix-up. <laughs> he don't... borrowed the money off his mum? I love that. <laughs> how bad is what that? What do you want for your birthday, son? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Thanks, Mum, for asking. A couple of bits of news as well. Hello, Doctor. How did it go? Um, well, well. firstly, don't look under the managers and don't have the goulash for lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. It, it was smaller than you went Mom, in Mum, you got five grand. Why? Just give me five up. <laughs> Tell me what it's for. <laughs> you can have it if you tell me what it's for. Well, look at that. Oh, you need a bigger one. Yeah, definitely. There's the money. <laughs> yeah. On you go. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say to the doctor then? That's rubbish. I didn't read all the ins and outs. I just, like I said, I saw just it. Just look for the picture. They want that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but you just thought, uh, well, thanks for it. You just thought you'd pop that one in. Thanks. Yeah, that's the, that's the end. Uh, yeah. Knob News Extra. Yeah. Play record, Carl. Right. So if you've got any knob news, um, we've got one more show left. Send that to ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we'll hopefully get that knob news on air next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Some Dizzy Rascal. Oh, Dizzy Rascal, yeah. He's one of the hot new English rappers. Let's play it. Loosen your hold. South. That's great, and I love that one. On XFM 104.9, on Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Good Carl. choice, Rick. Good choice. Carl, cheers, time. cheers, cheers. What are you thinking, Carl? What have you been doing this week? What's been going on? Yeah. Uh, You'd be miserable, miserable because of the heat, obviously. That's getting me down. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way people wander about as well, with next and out on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm always amazed by uh, 
the men. It's just a certain breed of man. Uh, like sometimes it's kind of builders, mechanics, taxi drivers, van drivers, but not necessarily. Students, all sorts of guys. And you'll sort of watch them walking down the street. They'll be walking down the street. Girls, you know, will see in their sort of summer gear. And it's literally, you know, eyes go, look at those legs. Oh, knockers. Oh, I can't believe my luck. Oh, you know, and they're sort of talking to their mates. They're checking it. Oh, it's an arse. I can't believe it. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, it's like they sort of forget. There's like some kind of amnesia that sweeps over them during the, the winter. Like months. it's a surprise. Yeah. And then it's like every time summer rolls around again and girls pop, they go, I can't believe it. Where have they been? They're back. Yeah. Yeah. And they get so excited. Oh, excuse me now, but they had tits under there all winter. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, Bloody hell. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's great to see them again. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets, yeah. gets to sort of October and they go, where have they gone? <laughs> they happened? just don't say anything. They just like, <laughs> exactly. get on with it. They, exactly. They're yeah. reminded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They completely forget. <laughs> yeah. For a sort of half a year. <laughs> uh, there was a fellow this morning, I just nipped out, having a cup of tea, reading the paper, reading that bit about nudists and that. Sure. And a uh, little old fella. Must have been. 75. Okay. Walks past. Shoe socks. Sort of shorts, but because he's old, I don't think he's got like a normal pair of shorts. So we're like suit pants, but short. <laughs> so really smart shorts that I've never seen before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But the thing is, with, with him being old and thin, yeah. it's just. Don't do that. Don't walk around like that. What, the legs? Put, the legs in the back. He'd look like a little tortoise without his shell on. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to see a tortoise without its shell on. Yeah. Just to see if it would run really fast and go, this is brilliant. Just yeah. scamper along. I saw a grotesque thing. I saw, I think it's Britain's fattest man. I'm not sure. Mm. He was huge. I mean, I don't wish him any ill, but so big. It was ludicrous. He was waddling down um, Oxford Street and he was, I mean, genuinely, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of, you know, ginormous mm. people. Rick Waller, for instance, yeah. turns my stomach. This guy was twice <laughs> as big. He was extraordinary. And he sat down on a big bench and literally took up the whole space. And he, he reached into his bag, he was having his lunch, and he was eating an apple. <laughs> and I really felt like I wanted to slap him on the back and go, he's a bit late for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's probably starting now. He's probably starting thinking that I'm going to make a change. And imagine if you just said that. Yeah. And he'd have... It'd have been awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. He, took, he, he cut it in half, put it between two slices of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, and I waited, don't know how you get and that. And waited for a pig to come past, yeah. shoved it in his mouth, <laughs> exactly. just swallowed it all. I don't oh. know how he gets that big. And it was like he'd come out to sort of soak up some of the sun, you know. Well, you look better with a tan. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. yeah. Was he wearing loose black clothes? <laughs> he was, of course that, he was wearing That works up clothes. to a point. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there, it's not falling anyone. There's vertical stripes. Yeah. To make it look yeah. thinner. Just people just walk past and think it's night. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> so, Carl. So, little... yeah, so, so that's, that's, you know, that's been annoying me with the weather and that. Yeah. And then, uh... I love the warm weather. Oh. Although I can't sleep at night. I had, I had two hours in front, just went and lay down in front of the window, in front of the French window, just because it was just too hot last night. But if I can sleep, I love hot weather. I love walking around when it's sunny. It's better for you. People are usually happier in hot weather. <laughs> the sun is good for you. I mean, it, it has been hot. I mean, it's 100 degrees. It's probably too hot to work, but... Mental. I can't, I can't think straight and stuff. You know your little baldy nice. head, isn't it bad for it? Because it just... Doesn't it get you, make, make your brain a little bit hot? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, i am just got my head on show. What about the nudists? <laughs> 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 worry about them before you worry about me. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, no, another another thing that happened in the week. Um, you know, I've just had builders round, sorting the kitchen out. Yeah, right? sure. Uh, so virtually skint. But another problem happens. Boiler starts playing up. Right. Right. So uh, and you've got to have a shower in this weather. You've got to, you've got to be have a shower on that and freshen up and what have you. Well, I have a shower know. every day anyway. I mean, two yeah. sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you haven't got any hot water, you can't, can you? Uh, right. Cold showers, all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Go on. So anyway, so uh fella comes round. Yeah. Ninety quid. Ninety quid. Ninety quid. Um all he did turns up, says, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh just bang it. Just bang, the, quid. bang the boiler. That's <laughs> ninety quid. <laughs> Last time I banged a boiler it cost me ninety quid. And there was a there was a lot of leakage then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know, I understand where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> I do sympathise. <laughs> but do you know, like I, I catch him out as well, do you know, like you know, I know they're they're up to no good yeah. and stuff. They don't earn the money. Sure. And he was in the bathroom, so I sort of creep up and I try and stick my head round the door to see what he's what, up to. What, when a bloke in the bathroom? <laughs> right. It's weird, isn't, isn't it? So you creep up to a man in the bathroom and put your head round without seeing you? Go on, though. Fair enough. 
Right, do you want to go over what happened that time when we were in the pub and I go to the toilet and you're trying to get in? <laughs> what happened? Is that normal? Go on, what happened? Let's go on, no, let's go on, not Shane, what happened? <laughs> go on, go on, go on, say it. <laughs> say it. What happened? Well, don't start a story and then don't finish don't, it. Or oh, we'll do it later. <laughs> Tell he, us was, he was in the he was in the cubicle and he got in the cubicle to have a piss to avoid me annoying him, right? So what I did, I got some of that liquid soap and I just put it over and squirted on him. And he came out going, "Look, it looks like someone's just effing jizz on me. I've got effing jizz on me back." I, then... I had to walk through Soho without me back. <laughs> I was walking to so and um, when was it we had to go to the uh when we went to the Ivy with those people uh, Wednesday or something like that yeah we had a business meeting right and uh well, what I was we were walking around the Ivy it was about half 11 and I was going down old Compton street and as I got to just going past Mamma Mia something hit me on the shoulder I looked down and obviously it was bird shit but just for, for just for a split second i thought it looked like jizz and i was, i just thought oh god because no, <laughs> and i sort of woke up and i thought right i went i gotta wash my hands and like get in it was obviously wasn't jizz it was just it was p- pigeon shit or something right but i i had this pamphlet once when i was at ulu terence higgins trust left this pamphlet and it was all stuff like safe sex and it was stuff like it, honestly, I swear, it said things like, you don't have to have four people <laughs> in the course. It said you can do lots of other things with your lover. Like... <laughs> it said, like, um, like coming to some fruit, e.g. a melon. It, it, it says, um, with friends, um, just come on the back of one of them, right? And then this is the bit that made me think, and I thought, oh, my God, when I looked down sort of my shoulder. It says... <laughs> Come out of a window! <laughs> yeah, on any passing celebrity. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I've got to get that pamphlet. If anyone's got that pamphlet, it was brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Good, right, well, um, let's play a record. Do you Edmonds to do <laughs> stuff like this on his show? <laughs> before the before that, we had uh, we had uh, Spunky News. <laughs> Spunky News. Coming yeah. up, Monkey News. That's the sort of linked... This is... Dr Fox is no better than this. No. He must see we're getting better now. Yeah. Have you got any uh, other news there, Carl? Uh, well, you were just talking about, uh, bird muck. <laughs> <laughs> what a classy <laughs> show this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better that, um... I imagine someone just having a barbecue tuned into this. Yeah. Can you turn the radio Imagine. off? He's talking about coming out of windows again, <laughs> darling. It's putting me off my sausages. No, what? I was walking down down the street and this pigeon, sparrow, whatever, uh, <laughs> did its thing and it landed on my ear. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so uh, I thought, well, I'm not going to wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because I don't want to get it on my hands. Right? <laughs> So I, thought I'd, I thought I'd leave it till I get home. So it was probably about... <laughs> so you went to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I met some friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Went, went, on, went on the pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was best man, so <laughs> often speeches. Yeah. Um, that is brilliant. Oh. No, uh, it, it was on there for, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. Brilliant. Uh, get home and uh, get Did some... it not kind of slowly ooze down your neck? No, no, it was fa- fairly hard. Right. And, um, <laughs> sort of corroded me ear. <laughs> what are you talking God. about? I don't Why know. did you leave it there, man? Why not just wipe it off with something? You I, can't, I, I, I can anything. walk around pop, with... Pop in a news station and buy some tissues. But well, then I'd look stupid. What, what where is the bird's muck on your ear? Brilliant. They're all, they're all wearing that now. But no, what, what, what is it the It's I, alkaline. No, it's al- really strongly alkaline, isn't it? Or is it acidic? I don't know. Maybe someone knows. Is bird yeah. mark acidic or alkaline? But it's corrosive, yeah. Weird, yeah. Isn't it? Weird. Weird, it, isn't it? It didn't seep into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, do you want to do, uh, do you want to set up Songs of Phrase? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, if you've not heard the show before... I thought we weren't doing this this week. I, I thought, thought we weren't. No, we'll, we'll do it once, right? And then next week's the last one, so we'll do Rockbusters. Leave, leave that might up. be the last one ever, depending on whether Carl decides to come back yeah. in October or not. Exactly. I'm bored of it. I told you I'm bored of it. Why are you bored with it? I get bored quick with stuff. 
Yeah. I told I told Suzanne the other night, I'd look she was. I haven't got not ri got rid of her yet. She's do you know what I mean? <laughs> Things... Did you, put, did you put on her soft music, though, <laughs> first, didn't you? You didn't just, like, start getting that around her... Yeah, you, you, know, you, you, you know you're a very lucky girl. Sorry? Well, I usually get bored with you and that. Yeah. Oh, do You're lucky you haven't pissed off. Yeah. Do you want to open the champagne or what? Well, she was God. annoyed the other God, night. what's that on your ear? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Pigeon shit, are not we? are walking to the pictures, right? To go yeah. and see, uh, Bruce Almighty. Sure. Why? And, uh... Just something to say, innit? Yeah. So you were you were trying to sneak in the back. <laughs> so uh, on the way, cutting across Leicester Square, uh -huh. and uh, those fellas who sell roses, he comes over. Do you want one? Do you want one? So don't do that. She's allergic to them, right? So so he'd go away. Yeah. She got all annoyed about that because she's not allergic to them. Well, she's not allergic now, but uh, they're about three quid each. <laughs> <laughs> she got, what the, what but the point of that guy is what? not that she really wants a rose. It's that you're willing to spend three pounds on her. Taking us to the pictures. <laughs> How much was that? That was eight quid each. Oh. Did you yeah. pay for it though? But Did didn't you, you have a, if I if I know you, you had her dressed up as a small child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and my son, please. Or you made her sit on your shoulders and wear a long coat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, listen, songs of phrase then. <laughs> you oh. paid for it to go in and then you went and had a pint while she watched it. <laughs> yeah. There's no point in both of us seeing it, but tell me about <laughs> tell it. Tell me what you? it's like. Oh, right, songs of phrase. So let's Again, explain what songs of phrase is. You do it. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> Um, if you think that Carl is bored with life, then you will be even more bored once you have heard this particular quiz. The gist of it is that Carl has taken a well-known phrase... Well, or saying, no, I'll stop you there. Not uh, a well-known phrase. Something that he said once. On this show. Yeah, probably. And he's somehow com uh, compiled together a number of different songs which have somehow <laughs> built up that particular phrase or sentence. Um, if it's anything about Chinese people, Philip Bailey will be involved. That's all I can say. <laughs> OK, let's hear it then, Carl. Right. All right. I don't oh, know what that is. I don't is. know what that was. This is appalling. I don't know this is what appalling. That is. Carl, Carl, I do not know what that is. What is the phrase? I just was saying last week about everyone's raving about Galileo. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they're not. No, that sounds they're like not. a sort of B-side from yeah. the Buggles. Everyone's raving about Beyonce and uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're, people they're going pop what, idol. What are you into? Galileo's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Forget it. Forget it. No. Excellent. Point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton. We were doing songs of phrase. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh god. So what is this phrase? What is the phrase, Carl? Last week we were talking about Galileo. Right. And I just was saying, <laughs> years ago, I can't remember now. When was it? When was he doing his thing? End of the 16th century, I think. Right. And he was messing about trying to find out about the speed of light or something. Is it? No, he did lots of he did lots of stuff going on. All I was saying is Gravity, back then, yeah, surely yeah. everyone was saying, "Stop messing with that, make us a telly." You know what I mean? There was other things that people would have been happier with, sure, back then. Like they, yeah. Like they didn't so know. the phrase is the phrase exactly is what the well known uh, phrase is what. Uh, Galileo. Uh, oh, it goes like this, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So it's Galileo, stop S talking to me talking about, about science. science. Make, Make me, me television. television. Make me television. Yeah. So you email in with with the bands and that. Brilliant. <laughs> right, let's uh, that, that, that is rock bottom. Of course I mean, it the, is. the well known phrase being Galileo, stop talking to me about science. Make me television. <laughs> As a well-known <laughs> phrase, is the one of the weirdest things I've ever... Forget jizz out of windows and things like that. That is the weirdest thing I've heard on radio as a competition. Can we have that one next week? <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, okay, well, here, here are the prizes. If you, if you think, Rick, that the, <laughs> if you think the quiz has hit rock bottom, wait till, wait till I, I tell you these prizes. No, brilliant. Um... Oh... I know that um, we're very much pushing new music on XFM and it's an alternative music yeah. station, so you'll be pleased that we're giving away, now that's what I call Music 55, <laughs> featuring the likes of Busted and uh, Daniel Beddingfield. Brilliant. Uh, you really know how to cater to our audience, don't you? The best dance album in the world, that includes um, DJ Sammy, Scooter... <laughs> And uh, Liberty X on there. <laughs> so I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, this is not so bad. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, a live DVD of a, <coughs> pardon me, a performance uh, at some, <coughs> pardon me again. But <coughs> anyway, 
<coughs> that basically sums up the prizes. So uh, I won't tell you the rest, they're all monotonous. But uh, anyway, <coughs> I think those crisps, Rick, have gone down the wrong way. <laughs> or, although I was eating goulash earlier. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So anyway, yeah, that's that's some of the prizes. <laughs> and you can win some tat. So if you can identify these artists. The well-known phrase, Galileo, stop talking to me about science, make me television. Galileo! <laughs> <Science. Please. laughs> television! <laughs> that's just But easy this week, I think. I those, yeah. Play record, Carl. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. You're talking about um, people coming around and just banging the boiler and charging 90 quid. Um, I think it was last Christmas. We had a dripping tap, right? And uh, it started off just dripping a little bit. And then after a couple, I thought, you know, we'd get that sorted out. We couldn't actually turn the tap. Couldn't, it was just solid where the, the, the washer had gone. And then... Over Christmas, like, it's like before Christmas, um, it just started flowing. It was just, like, on. And I was thinking, this is terrible. It was totally worse. It was the hot tap. And, uh, of course, everything, the caretaker going away, everything had been closed down. So I called out an emergency plumber. Christmas. Yeah. Like, he couldn't get it to turn the tap off. Right? So, um, he was trying and trying. And in the end, he said, well, what I could do is I could just squash the pipe. Right, and cut the pipe and squash it, and then you could change the whole thing. I went, yeah, whatever, right, because I can't have this. So, uh, he said, I've got to go to the van. And he got this tool, came up to squash the pipe. He was only a young lad, right? Wasn't strong enough. So I had to help him squash the pipe. Right. He squashed the pipe, cut it, put a little nozzle on it, you know, just to seal it, right? And uh, I was 180 quid. 180 quid? And I wanted to say, surely that's half mine. Yeah. I helped it, and I was sort of being sarcastic. When Johnny was there, I was going, how much was that tool you... He went, it was only about nine quid. I went, pays for itself, isn't it? Yeah. And I was going, can I get one of them? He was going, yeah, get them anywhere. Oh, obviously, yeah. didn't it? And then he went, I wrote a cheque for 90 quid, and he went, oh, I didn't charge you for the nozzle on the end. I went, no. He went, I said, how much is that then? He said, two fifty. So I can leave you cash for that. Two pounds fifty. <laughs> Hundred and eighty two pounds fifty. So he hadn't even really sorted the problem out. But what can you do what can you do? You know, yeah. he wasn't ripping me off. That's the prices. Yeah. He's not gonna go, I'll tell you what, mate, because you helped me, uh call it quits. <laughs> yeah. Just buy me lunch. <laughs> it's yeah. not gonna happen. Yeah. My mate was locked out of his uh flat once. Um and he went out and shut the door behind him and that was it. And he'd looked through a letterbox and he could see his keys. Mm -hmm. Right? Phoned a locksmith, says, Look, can you come round? I can see my keys. Right? I just have to go out, and he went, well, yeah, but I don't, that doesn't matter. I said, I'm going to try it, it's 90 quid. And he went, 90 quid? He went, but I can see the keys. He went, yeah, I can get them for you. And he went, and my mate said, you're going to come round, you're going to charge me 90 quid, and you're going to scoop my keys up with a bent coat hanger. And the locksmith said, have you got a bent coat hanger, mate? It's brilliant. But it's a fair point, isn't it? It do you is know what a I mean? valid point, that's it. And what, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. I'd have gone, ha, thanks for the expert advice, and then asked a neighbour for a bent coat hanger. And they went, well, we'll call it 100 quid. <laughs> yeah. But that's more expensive than a locksmith. Well, yeah, because you're going to illegal traders. <laughs> exactly. We've got no licence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got to yeah. pay a little bit more in case we get fined. <laughs> exactly. But that's, yeah. that's what was going on when, you know, the, the fellow was around the other day fixing the boiler in the bathroom. Just wanted to make sure that he was, that he was working on it because it all went quiet in there. Mm. He had the door shut. I'm trying to... Have a little quick, quick sort of peep, <laughs> seeing if he's doing anything. And I push the door. <laughs> like, it sounds. But just pushing the door slowly, and he's going, "Don't come in." <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing?" Well, what was he doing? Don't know. But then he's like, three down, probably doing a crossword again." <laughs> that's that's what annoys me. The the way that you know it's all secret. You're not coming in, and you, you hear the odd bang now and again. He's probably sat there, crossword, three down, giving it the old just now and again with his foot. Just, just, just annoying. Yeah. How much annoying. did he charge you? 90 quid? It's just under 90 quid. Yeah. Yeah. And all he said was, you know, give it a bang. If you don't work again, give it a bang. What does that mean? <laughs> is that an air block and they just like, what is it? I don't know. It's not that complicated. You wouldn't think a boil is that complicated. It's not like understanding, you know, how uh, a fast breeder works or a computer. It's a big lump of metal without water in it. How, how can we not know how that works? Yeah. We were discussing yesterday, me and Glenn were trying to work out how a fridge works. Right. It's pretty cool. Magic? 
It is the magic comes down the electricals into the frozen peas. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Can't still talk about, I, I know it's something to do with the, the hydrofluorocarbons are, can exist at much lower temperatures without freezing. So when they enter the fridge, sort of under pressure, as they flow round, because the, the pressure goes down, they take energy from the the it's, per, it's perhaps a discussion to have in the club, but not on the air. Player record. I club. still can't figure out. I've never quite understood how a plane stays in the air. It always unnerves so me when I'm in a plane. Turning a tap on, getting water. <laughs> Back to going in the go. <laughs> Carl goes walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's a bit of science for you. Go on. Right. Um, read the other day. Yeah. If your dog had a big hole, right? Oh, God. Started digging, say in uh, wherever, the Trafalgar Square, right? Yeah. Uh, you dig a big hole and you keep digging. Yeah. And you go right through the earth. Right. Out to the other side. Yeah. So you, you're somewhere in Australia or something, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you go back to come back again, come back to London. Right. Yeah. Stand next to the hole, jump in it. Apparently, you can jump through the world in 42 minutes. <laughs> it's interesting. But then I was thinking, will you fall, and then when you come out the other end, would you fall back again? Well, yeah, you would, wouldn't you? What would happen is, you'd accelerate, uh, ten metres per second, per second, to the centre of the earth, you but you'd have, but, you know, you'd, but, but you'd have such inertia, you'd nearly go as far out the other end before it was like a bungee jump, so you'd nearly get as far as the other end, and then you'd go back again, and you'd keep going until back and forth, getting getting further and further away from making it, until you went da -da 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 -da, sort of back and forth in the centre, and then you'd stay still in the centre. Have you drilled a hole through the <laughs> earth? <laughs> get in touch. Email xfm.co.uk <laughs> and just let us know how you got on. Did you get to the other side? Did you get to Australia? Did you buy one of those funny cork hats? Did how you does, see Paul Hogan? How does a fish work? Growing on me, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I bored Carl. I lost him, didn't I, in a little conversation. Yeah, there. you were talking about quantum physics, to be Yeah, clear. I was just explaining what a black hole was. Cos we were talking like that as well last night. And just halfway through, he just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> put his headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's the, thing, it's the thing about Carl is he speaks with such authority about things that he thinks he knows about. Monkeys. And when you try, yeah, and when you try to explain to him about stuff, you know, he thinks, he goes, no, of course ghosts exist. And yeah. you try to explain to him why it's conceivable they don't. Ah, no, no. He can't, he can't be bothered with that. Yeah, you? He's, you did all your learning at about 12, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm still picking bits up now. <laughs> <laughs> Said without irony. <laughs> oh, brilliant. What have you learned recently? Anything interesting recently you've learned? Darwin. That's why I was asking you about him. Right. Yeah, just, Darwin. Uh, we know what he did, didn't you? I don't know what he did. I just read the other day that they've they've got a treatment for whatever illness he had. I thought it was a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that saying that to his family? What did Darwin do? What did Darwin do? You I don't know. know. You were... Um, you were just trying to explain it to me, but I'm, I'm busy doing stuff, aren't I? I can't take it all in whilst I'm sorting the ads out, putting CDs in. You know what I well, mean? He, he, Ticking off the knob news. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he formulated the theory of evolution based on natural selection. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but wait, wait, though. Do you, you think that's good? Do you think he's... Do you think that's well done? you impressed with that? Cos you're not impressed with things like, you know, you famously said, uh, um, Newton, so... It said gravity, but it was already there. If we'd have been floating around, it'd been a problem. We weren't, so keep out of it. That's what you said. You said, Einstein, I've never used EMC squared in my life, but the bloke who invented the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> so I wonder if you're impressed by Darwin formulating, I think, the most important scientific theory since uh, Newton's laws. Has it made a difference? Or, or whatever he said... Would it have happened anyway? You can't do that. You're not allowed to say that. You can't say, oh, well done, I'd have found it eventually anyway. You can't do that. You've got to give people their due, do you know what I mean? But but now it's difficult to find stuff because there's less to find out now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition. But on what scale? On what scale are you lo looking at? Why do you mean there's less to find out? Well, now, I mean, they, they're bringing stuff out that... <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just... The iPod. Well, yeah. <laughs> sure. Didn't see the point in that, no. the iPod. Do you know, he actually listed the three songs he'd ever want to carry around with him. I can't remember what they were. What are the three what songs you'd carry Killing the Georgie. Killing the Georgie, yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? Probably have uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Right. Yeah. Moving. Living in the city. Stevie do, you know why, like, do you know why that? Because that's, that's like a little film to him. Yeah. 
That's three songs where there's a little story. He knows the ending. Yeah. But it's someone singing it to him. <laughs> a little... Just, just put them on it. A th how many songs can I hold? Well, seven and a half thousand. Seven thousand. Put that on. Seven and a half thousand times. Sure. Well, you don't need to, do you? I mean, that is like that joke. The, the, the wish. Put, imagine putting on seven and a half thousand. You know that, that joke about you got three wishes. It says a never-ending bottle of Guinness. And he goes, second wish, you're going to have two more of these. Yeah. Like, you don't need to put them on seven and a half thousand times, do you? No, you don't, you don't have to. <laughs> Never yeah. mind, Carl. Never mind. Uh, answers rushing in, we should point out, for the quiz. Most of them agreeing that uh, it's pointless. Um, some people <laughs> have called it... It's songs of Phrase, of course. Um, some people have referring to it now as Songs of Arse. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, more than appropriate, but you'll be pleased to know that it's ending this week, and next week we've got the return of the even more pitiful Rockbusters. For the last one. That's back for the last one. We'd perhaps also need your petitions to Carl. If you want us to stay on the air, then you need to petition Carl, giving good reasons why he should stay, why this show isn't boring, or rather why he shouldn't be bored by it. I mean, you're bound to be bored as listeners, but obviously uh, he's running out of steam now. What, you, what, what, what are you fed up with? You're just fed up with uh, general, are I mean, you want your Saturdays back, do you? Just want a bit of a life back, that's all. But, but you don't do anything with your life you when you've got it. Why don't you do this instead of, like, your day job? Can't. It's more important than your day job, innit? That's what earns the company money and that. Know what I mean? Well. So. What you do? Why don't you do a regular show, then? Sack someone who's, you know, quite well, frankly not putting the way. I've done that. I did that years ago. What done do you mean? It, done it. I told you, I've done a lot of stuff. Boxing. Done. <laughs> tick. Dancing, done. No, you turned out, the place was shut. <laughs> yeah, but... Dancing? When did you do dancing? That's when he, when he went and said, I want to do dancing, and he went along to the, the place, and it was shut, and that was it. And he said, I didn't do it anymore. That's not doing it, is it? Boxing, he had a fight with one lad, then the lad beat him up, and he didn't go again. <laughs> oh, dear, it's pathetic. Well, anyway, yeah, so this uh, is basically our penultimate show. Next week's the, the final... And uh, we're all looking forward to that enormously. Yeah. But uh, that may be it forever, then, and uh, this, this, you know... All for one, all, all, you know, one for all, all for one. The Three Musketeers, gone forever. Yeah. I, for one, will be pleased. <laughs> oh, I'll have to get some of these taped, because I like coming in sort of, um, you know... Internally, Rick, don't be afraid to nick as many CDs as you see fit on that last show. I, that, people have already nicked them. No, I know, but I just mean, take whatever you want. Is that Four Non Blondes is still there, isn't it? I think it's still there. Because I don't want that to be nicked. Yeah. And I've got a feeling, um, there's... Because I don't think there's any Smiths in the library, but there's quite a lot of Gina G. Really? What? What was that sigh for? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. What? Ooh. Play a yeah. record. Monkey News is on the way, plus the results. This isn't radio. Keep, you've got to keep talking or playing music. Play some music? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Art of Gold by Neil Young on XFM 104.9. Um, Pop Idol, of course, begins this evening. I know you're looking forward to it, really. Yeah, love it. It's love always it. a joy, isn't it? Especially those early rounds with the, uh... The, the mentors, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are always extraordinary. Uh, that's the only reason I watch. I mean, I can't be bothered with the later contest. It's just watching the freaks for the first couple of weeks. Uh, it's an absolute uh, pleasure. Yeah, I sort of like watching the judges. They're good as well. Oh, the judges are good. Yeah, I like yeah. the fact they, they they've got their little shtick. You know, the, the special jokes they've obviously written or just waiting to get them in. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. great. But I love when Pete Waterman cries as well. Does he cry? Sometimes, if he's moved by it. <laughs> he's better than bloody Bobby Davin. <laughs> like it, yeah. yeah. Rosie Ribbon made him cry. <laughs> he just wells up and then... <laughs> like that. That's good, I like that. He yeah. talks a lot of old ass, doesn't he, Pete Waterman? I sort of quite like oh, him, though. I don't know, I find him irritating. Well, It's like yeah. he genuinely thinks he's up there with Lennon and McCartney. That's one of the great kind of pop Svengalis of his time. Yeah. And, you know, you, I don't know, you wrote songs for Sunita. Well, don't yeah, let's, that, let's, let's, not, let's not knock them. There's foxes on there. True. No, no, Dr Fox is a genius. <laughs> He'll obviously can step in if there's any medical emergencies. Um, Rick Waller, you'll be pleased. Now, I'm a, obviously, as you know, I'm a huge Rick Waller fan. Um, not only has he got a great singing voice, but he's, he really is a picture, mm. <laughs> isn't he? Um, no, I know it's a bit harsh. I've said it before, but I do, he, does, um, he does make me a little sick to the stomach when I look at Rick Waller. Um, and I, to be honest with you, it's his own fault. You know, he, got, he went in Celebrity Fit Club, he had a chance to sort things out, and his attitude was wrong, and um, he didn't trim down. And uh, he's, for want of a better phrase, a bloater. Mm. And slightly grotesque. But, you know, he's in the paper this week saying that 
it was all because of his image. He didn't fit the stereotype of what pop star should look like. Blah 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 blah. Well, he's disgruntled <laughs> by this. He's got a great singing voice. Well, and, he has got a great singing voice. But the point is this, Rick. The point is this. Since the days of Elvis, since the days of Bing Crosby, he's not as bad as Elvis. <laughs> no, but you're a star because you have to have the whole package: the voice, yeah, the it's... sex appeal, everything. We know yeah. how it works. Kids buy it. It's pop music. That's what pop music is. Mm. You know, if you want to be uh, a big fat bloater, you've got to at least be as good as Barry White. He isn't. Or Pavarotti. Or Pavarotti. And so anyway, he set up a um he set up an organization. He's already got a band, you know. He's got so a band. you're saying get over it, the world should revolve around looks. But, well no, I'm saying pop music. That's what pop music is. I mean this kind of obsession with he should get a chance. But you not know? on record. No, I know, but um, be a he session might... backer, be, be a backing singer. The point yeah. is this kid wants to be a star. He wants to be a star, doesn't he? Yeah. That's the point. He doesn't want to sing and make a couple of records. He just wants to be a star. He wants I'd, to be I'd, a I'd have thought that's that's the real rub. That actually he's not being truthful with himself. Yes. He doesn't just want to make beautiful music and sing well. He he wants to be you know carried round on a sedan chair and adored. Imagine that. I know. Imagine I'd, the he'd have to have people. a lot of money to pay for the entourage that can carry yeah, him. Yeah, four I elephants know. needed. But he's got a, a company now. He set it up with his dad. It's a management company. It's called Star Search, and basically he's hoping to break the fickle industry. Um, you know. Uh, expectations, and so if you're a bit of a grotesque, if you're a freak of some kind, if you're someone that Carl, you know, would be impressed by or, um, you know, alarmed by, then you can get in touch with Rick and he can put you in there. Women with beards, little midget fellas, whatever. Whatever it does not fit the usual should norm. We, should we cut along? <laughs> I'm thinking the three of us next week. We won't, oh, have, we won't have much to do after next week. Mm. You know, Ricky's got a bit of a singing voice on him. <laughs> I'm learning to play Blowing in the Wind on the keyboard by Bob Dylan. Yeah. So I can master that. I don't know what you can do. You, can, oh, you, can, dance. you can dance. You can dance, can't you? You know that. You've done it. You've done dancing, so... <laughs> exactly. It's like, you Little know... Little Donkey. We'll have a hit at Christmas. <laughs> Perfect. I'm good at that. What were you meant to be playing when you did Little Donkey in the play? Drums to We Three Kings. But you just busted live, didn't you? On, done that. On We're just donkey. talking about looks and stuff, right? <laughs> Always. Because, um, you know, it... it Sort of cheeky freak of the week, we did that and I stopped mm. doing it. Sure. It was upsetting a few people. Mm -hmm. Um There was a thing <laughs> on the website the other day about Elephant Man. Yeah. Right? Just keeping up to, you know, up on the news, what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they did Drunky a, news. They did, they did a thing about him and what it'd look like if his head wasn't messed up. Yeah, yeah. And they made a little picture for him. Was he quite good looking? Not bad looking, but he can't use it. It's not like... You can't, you can't put it on a passport. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, and the fact that he's been dead for several years. <laughs> yeah. No, but they also do that sort of thing for people who are alive. They say, "This is what you look like." So you can't use it for that. Yeah. You can't use it. On, isn't like, that like, that's sort of like rubbing it in, though, isn't it? Really, it's is a bit. Yeah. yeah. Unless they said, "Good news, you were ugly anyway." <laughs> yeah. Does he got honest? <laughs> you, you wouldn't have pulled it. You, you didn't look like a. If you were symmetrical, you weren't a looker. <laughs> You couldn't use that on a little dating agency picture. This is what I look like. Yeah. yeah. This, is what, this is what I would have looked like. And they phone up and go, I'm intrigued. What do you mean, would have looked like? <laughs> well, I see you, as we said, seven o'clock. How will I recognise you? I'll be eating buns. Yeah, look for the giant cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a goat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love the fact that you're keeping up, keeping up to date with what the elephant man might have looked like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is amazing. Carl's news is largely what's happening in around around 1880. Yeah, yeah. Or might, what might have happened exactly, yeah. around 1880. No, but it's yeah. sad though. Did you watch that thing in the week? That what are you staring at program? I didn't know. I couldn't face it. it did, I know what you mean. It was about people who'd had unfortunate deformities. And yeah, stuff. yeah. And it was it was really sad. I suddenly felt bad about you know some of the stuff we yeah. talked about and what have you because. <laughs> Just say something like that, that's quite a nice thing to say. I was talking about, about some of the things we talked about. Should we go over what we've discussed today? What? What subjects have we brought up today? How can you feel sorry about things like that when we're still doing it? No, well, I'm, ju I'm just saying, you know, you have a laugh and that, but then you see a program about it and you go, oh. What? You realise they're real people you're talking about? Yeah. When do you ever forget that? When do you ever forget that when you bring up these <laughs> cheeky freaks of the weeks, or when we talk about Rick Waller, that he's, there's not a real person on the other end uh, thinking about it? Yeah, but sometimes it's hard because they don't look like real people. <laughs> Play a record! Don't snag off Rick Waller. <laughs> that girl was on with a big head. <laughs> it's like bow selector. 
We played some uh, Dizzy Rascal earlier. And, and that was wicked. <laughs> exactly, and he's the new kind of, uh, <laughs> the kind of London rap sensation. Yeah, but yeah. let's not forget credit to the nation from 1994. They're Teenage from Birmingham now, Steve. Whatever happened to MC Fusion, he got a lot of bad press at the time, people didn't respect him, but I'm listening to that now, I think it was bloody brilliant. Yeah. All right. And crucial, now. <laughs> exactly, adverts. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Stephen Merchant, and that little, little bald head at a mank over there is Carl Pilkington. cock a leaky soup? cock a leaky soup is fine. That was one from Nick. Thanks for that, Nick. Yeah. Is it Cock was referring to the woman who chewed on a knob in a goulash. <laughs> exactly. People, if, you've, uh, if you've just tuned in, you've missed that hilarious story. Yeah. We I mean, still don't know why she was eating goulash. I've got a rash, look, come up on my arm, look at that. Brilliant, fascinating, thanks for that. That's from rubbing his head, getting him in headlock, and it's, uh, have you got some on your hair? Cos look at that, that's like a heat rash. What are you washing your hair with? It's have you still got that bird shit behind your ear? What is that? That's really worrying, isn't it? It's like how, like, the body changes over many years of sort of <coughs> certain things. Yeah. It's like your body changes to protect yourself from the sun and what have you. Yeah. My head just got used to being rubbed. <laughs> yeah. It's reacting now. Oh, it's, it's, that's a defence mechanism, is it? Yeah. Uh, right, I see. All right. Look at that, that's horrible. Anyway. Um, You've got something on your air, you know. Monkey news? I was going to say the winner. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, come on, it, uh, someone got all of them, didn't they? Well, OK, play it again then. This was Songs of Phrase. We did the the well-known phrase is Galileo, stop talking about science, make me television. <laughs> The most convoluted, banal quiz on any radio station ever. I mean, I'm including Moyles, Chris Evans, do you know what I mean? Simon Bates. That's worse than anything they ever did. Apparently, uh, Channel 5 have bought the rights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, anyway, what were the answers, Carl? We had Queen in there, Altered Images, Thomas Dolby. Yeah. Uh, Beatles, Aretha Franklin, and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, extraordinarily, Tracy and John Burton from Colchester and Essex got all of those right. Why they would want the prizes, I've no idea, but good luck to them. They can enjoy those uh, at some point. God bless. Okay, monkey news? Do you want a bit? Yes, please. Play jingle. the jingle. This rash is weird. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. Uh, right, they were filming a. A documentary, right? This telly company. Yeah. Doing a documentary. Who? Which one? Which one? Which I one? I don't know. No? Well, what was the documentary about? About monkeys. Yeah. Uh, where was it? Where Africa. was it? Right. Where, when was this? I haven't got a date. <laughs> okay. Recently, though, since the advent of television, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, a bit of extra monkey news if you, <laughs> if you want it. Okay, always. Do you know the, um... Monkey news extra. Go on. Do you know the Halfords ads? Halfords ads. I don't think so. No, what happens? Halfords. They've, they've, uh, you know, they sell nuts and bolts and stuff. Right. Uh, they were using monkeys in the ads. Okay. Um. Yeah. And what yeah. happened? Pack it. Don't they sell bikes, Halfords? Well, mainly. <laughs> Bicycles and, and motorbike stuff in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so they're using monkeys in the advert. What happened? <laughs> I can't handle it. What? I can't do this. Look what, at what? him. Look at him. <laughs> I don't care what he's doing. <laughs> and it, well, basically, right, they've, uh, they, uh, there was a load of hassle because they were using these monkeys in this alpha advert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what happened? Get to the point. It turned out there wasn't a problem because there were mechanics in the first place. Well, they were monkey mechanics. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mental. What are you talking about? That's not a story. Well, anyway, listen, let's get, let's get back on <laughs> to it. There were mechanics in the first place. <laughs> Right, listen. Right, so they're making this documentary. Right? And uh, they stumble across a, a little gang of... A uh, little gang... <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Just... Get a on with it, please. Little, little gang of monkeys. That's yes. the first time I've ever laughed. I'll hear that. <laughs> I know. Well, brilliant. What do you want, a cake? <laughs> Come on! Can we play a song? Oh. I don't understand what is wrong with you, you freak. It's making me laugh. <laughs> Just tell us the story. All right, then. All right. <clears throat> so, anyway, right, so there's this, this documentary being made. They found a little gang of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> right, play a song. I don't know what's going on here. I apologise. Got to hide your love away. 
According to the Beatles on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Right, Carl, come right, on. Where, monkey where news. Where Everyone's where composed. The jingle, please. Oh, chimpanzee that. Monkey news. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Right. Right, where were we? We were just start again. There's some people making a documentary. <laughs> For what? Okay. For... Making a documentary in, uh, in a jungle and that. Right. Stumble across a little gang. <laughs> okay, okay, come on. All right. Um, a little gang of monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. So the camera crew are there filming it. Yes. Everything's going normal. It's nothing, all nothing yeah. odd about it. Okay. <laughs> they don't. They're not running a restaurant. They've not got any barber shops. <laughs> nothing. No. Just regular monkeys going about their business. Yeah. So anyway, uh, mm. the what what normally happens is the monkeys st stick with the partner. <laughs> <laughs> they, do what? They, they don't sort of sleep around and that. Once they oh, find, right, they, they, once they find the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whatever, yeah. they, st they stick with them, right? <laughs> okay. But anyway, they were watching this one, right? And uh, it's, it's going around a bit, sleeping around. Oi, oi. And it was getting fatter. <laughs> they thought, this is a bit odd. Yeah. Right? So, uh, followed it round. <laughs> and uh, see it having it away. Turns out, little prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little monkey prostitute. And it was getting fatter because it was charging them bananas. <laughs> <laughs> what a load of old rubbish. What, it's charging them bananas. <laughs> what was it, a boy or... It was a... Woman. Little woman monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most extraordinary monkey news I've ever heard. Oh, that is genius. Has this documentary been televised? Mm. Uh, I don't think it's been on yet. No. And that's all the information you've got. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and is that that's um, that's one banana for everything? The half banana is for just oral. Uh, a poor job. Right. Um if you want full blown uh monkey sex, <laughs> it is two and a half bananas. <laughs> sure. Sure. So uh let's just play a song. Okay. <laughs> let's just play a... Alright, well this is our penultimate show, which we'll be back next week. We're gonna make it a barnstormer, I'm sure, lads. I want hundred percent behind it, hundred and ten percent. Next week, all right? None of this giggling, none of this infantile giggling, okay. like two schoolboys. Right. All right, we're going to come back, we're going to have some quality monkey news next week, we're going to have all kinds of treats, I would have thought. Okay. Some great prizes. All right? Are yeah. we okay? Yeah, we best show. Let's make next week the best show ever. Good luck. If you miss it, then you miss out. We're ending with a track from a couple of years back, I think it was 92, 93, uh, Dinosaur Junior, Start Chopping. Play that. Start playing. Forget Start <laughs> Chopping, start playing. All right. All right? See you next week. Yeah.